Let us pray. Tell us what we need to hear, O God, and show us what we need to do to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, I want to call your attention this morning to the psalm that was read earlier, our Old Testament lesson from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down. You are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. My friends, I want to focus on just three words. You know me. O God, you know me. First, to know. What does it mean to know someone? Now, in the English language, we are sometimes impoverished by our language, which collapses several meanings into one word. And that works well for systemization and technology, but not so well for communicating nuance of art and emotion. For instance, that word love, we in English, we use the same word love for anything from uh, I just love my mom's apple pie. Or when looking at the person laying with you, uh, laying beside you for 50 years, I know that man. I know that woman. Or rather, I love that woman. I love that man. There's a great deal of distance between love of a lifelong partner and love of a slice of apple pie. The same with the word to know. You know, in Spanish, there are two words for to know. Um, saber, mean, meaning to know factually, or conocer, to know someone relationally. In these languages, we can have gradations of what that means. In English, not so much. So we get confused sometimes when someone says, I know that person. To know me is to love me. That old saying goes, well, any marriage that lasts will teach you that love has to precede knowing. You know that to be true. Those of us who have been married or partnered with someone for a long time, when that ceremony comes, you think you know that person. I'm sure when we got married, I knew that I, uh, that I knew my wife 25 years ago. And she thought she knew me. But within the year, we're thinking, whatever happened? I'm thinking, whatever happened to that sweet woman that I thought I knew? And I'm sure she's thinking, whatever happened to that holy, wonderful priest that everyone loves? We didn't know each other very well. But we came to know each other well because we loved each other. You have to love a person to take the commitment to get to know them. It's like what Abraham Lincoln, uh, our 16th president of the United States, maybe our most beloved one, he's, he once said, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. There's a great spiritual truth there. If you really want to get a chance to get to low, know, uh, know someone better, then you have a better chance of actually loving them. And that's why when the psalmist said, Lord, you know me, you know me, that's an invitation that the more God knows you, the more God loves you. Ah, who would have thought? And so now the second word I want to focus is on is you. You know me. That is addressed to God. This was not always good news to me, I confess to you, my friends. My early image of God from my religious upbringing and a very strict, uh, a strict religi uh, religious upbringing in another denomination, it left me with a rather harsh view of God. I thought of God as someone who was always ready to lower the boom on me. And so in the book of Genesis, for instance, after Adam and Eve had transgressed, they had gone against the will of God, and they were running away. They were trying to hide from God. 
imagine that. Even as a young kid, I remember at vacation Bible school, I was laughing. Oh, you can't hide from God. I wish I had remembered that all the years of my life because sometimes I, like you, do try to hide from God. And when God asked the question, Adam, where are you? Eve, where are you? I always heard that voice of God, the Almighty, looking for Adam and Eve to crush them because they sinned. Where are you? I'm going to get you now. It wasn't until years later in seminary that I learned from a wise old professor that that phrase, Adam, where are you, was the cry of a lonely God. Where are you? Eve, I miss you. I need you. I love you. And it was a, an image of a God who was always searching, always searching. There was a time in my life when I was trying to come to grips with the untimely death of a loved one. And I knew even then I had to take a break from God. It was very hard for me to go to church, hard for me to hear the hymns, because she should not have died. I was angry at God. How could God let this happen? And as you can tell, it was, it was temporary, but sometimes we do have those uh, periods where you're just so angry at what has happened that it's very hard to come to this God, unless you hear the cry of a lonely God. Even at that moment, God was saying to me, Eugene, where are you? You don't need to run from me. I did not cause that bad thing to happen. I need you. I want you. My first wife, Barb, when she, God rest her soul, having, um, when she was miscarrying from the first, uh, uh, from the baby that we really wanted. And we had tried for years, years for her to get pregnant, and it just never happened, never happened. And finally she did, but then she began miscarrying, and we were crushed. Oh, God, all of these people are having kids who don't want them. And here we are, we think we'll be great parents, and we can't have any. And as she was losing the child that was in her womb, she was so angry at God, but she, tell, she used to tell that story publicly of uh, her being like this. And yet she could hear the voice of God calling out for her, but she was like that little child who, uh, who is so angry at the parent, and the parent wants to hold them, but they're going, eh, stop, stop, stop. That's how she felt. But yet those loving but, but mighty arms of God just held her, just held her. And it brought her back. Lord, you know me. You know me. You are that God. And then lastly, you know me. Why me? I'm just not that important. God has a whole lot of things going on in the world. Why should he be concerned about you, Terry? You, Philip. Doesn't God have more important things to do? A wise spiritual teacher told this story regarding knowing oneself. He said, I keep two small stones in my pockets. The stone in one pocket tells me that I am a sinner, self-serving, quite capable of causing immense suffering, injustice. But then there's the other stone, and it tells me that I am a unique and wonderful person, loved by God unconditionally. The secret to living a happy life, he said, a good, wholesome life, is to keep both stones as a constant reminder of who I really am. Finally, Father Bill went. God rest his soul. He taught me many things about ministry when I was starting out. 
he told me that every morning when he gets up and he goes to the bathroom washing up, he would look up into the mirror and say, I love you. He saw himself as God saw him. He knew himself as God knew him. So my friends, do you know who you are? Do you have any idea who you are? I have some good news for you. God knows you. And that's why you're here. Because you want to be known and known by him. And God knows you specifically. And God wants to invite you to get to know him better. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.